Earthbed. Good day learners, this is Earth Pen. This time, we will thoroughly understand the science concepts responsible for floating our massive ships. But before we begin the discussion, if you would like to encourage us to produce more educational content, please show your support by giving a like to the video and subscribing to our channel. You can also help our team grow with your monetary support through our donation PayPal link located in the description below. Have you ever played throwing pebbles to a body of water like the pond or the beach? From that act, we can observe our thrown pebbles sinking. So, how could a heavy steel ship be able to float in the water when a small pebble cannot? Well, thanks to Archimedes, we are now enjoying the benefits of floating ships. Archimedes was a Greek scientist and mathematician in the 3rd century BC. He noticed how the water level rose as he immersed his body in a bathtub. When he was able to understand this phenomenon, he immediately rushed to tell the people. And yes, he was the scientist who shouted, Eureka! Eureka! Or it means I have found it. The principle that he was able to establish is called the Archimedes Principle, or mostly known as the buoyancy. It was named based from the Spanish translation of float which is buyar. By definition, buoyancy is the force acting upon an object, making that object rise or move upward. Aside from that, this principle states that in order for the objects to float, the buoyant force exerted on an object in a fluid must be equal to the weight force of the displaced fluid. In simpler words, the applied downward force on the object, determined by its weight, mass times gravity, must be equal or lesser than the buoyant force in order for the object to float. Basically, if we talk about buoyant forces, it deals with density, which measures the proportion of weight to the volume it occupies. It could be simply calculated by mass over volume. Imagine putting a block of wood and a block of metal with the same size in a fluid. The block of wood will disperse a small amount of fluid compared to the block of metal. This means that the block of metal is denser than the block of wood. And denser materials tend to have greater downward forces. Now in order for either of the materials to float, they should have a downward force not greater than the buoyant force. Because if they do have greater downward forces, then the upward forces of the fluid or the buoyant force, the material will certainly sink. Then why does the steel ships float when they are definitely made up of metal which is very dense materials? This is because of their shape and what is in its internal design. Ships are not made up of solid pieces of steel, but it is made up of hollow steel shells, so it is not as dense as we think. Aside from its essential parts like engine, fuel, and other cargoes, air is most importantly inside the shape. We can all agree that air is lighter and less dense than water, and this is what keeps our massive ships floating. The average density of the ship's volume, especially the air inside it, must be less than the density of water with the same volume. As the ship is placed in a body of water, its weight creates the downward force, which displaces massive volume of water equal to its weight. This great amount of fluid will force themselves to go back to its original position, creating a great amount of buoyant force that keeps the ship floating. In the situations where ship sinks, this is because water enters the interior of the ship, pushing the air out and at the same time increasing the average density of ship until it sinks. This were the problems of the famous ship sinking accidents like the RMS Titanic at North Atlantic Ocean on April 1912. The ship struck an iceberg and still at very low temperature became hard and brittle that created holes that let the water in. As more water entered the ship, the ship's density increased which caused it to sink. This situation is similar to any other ship that sunk they haven't maintained their density requirement to float. And that is all for now. I hope you learned something from us today. Once again, this is Earth Pen. Learning has never been this easy for anyone 
anywhere. Have a nice day.